online results, this guy has got them in spades. I believe he is ranked 25th on the Wi-Fi Warrior rankings. He is not 25th best in Missouri. I believe he's actually the best player in Missouri. Yeah. So don't <laughs> let that ranking fool you. Imagine, like, yeah, I'm the 25th best player in Missouri. Oh, word. Uh, but Cola, speaking of the Wi-Fi Warrior rank, uh, Cola, during the quarantainment series, he was number one. Yep. In the, the first uh, first half of uh, 2020, like you say, he took a break, so he's no longer at that high spot. But he's still a player to be reckoned with. Ended up taking a 3-2 victory over Kirby Kid to make it to this part of the bracket. Meanwhile, we got Yez, who took 3-1 over uh, New Day's Palatana. So, uh, this is looking like we're jumping into the game immediately, right out the gate here. Yeah, both players very scrappy, and their characters lend themselves to that, or really force you to play like that, especially in the case of Ike who doesn't really have too much mobility. He's just got to be getting those big swings and making them count whenever possible. Roy hits pretty much equally as hard, and he's a lot faster, but he also doesn't have the durability that Ike does. We'll mm. see if Yez is able to, I'd say probably uh, a bad matchup for Ike if he's able to win it. And with the results this guy has, he's won plenty of bad matchups for Ike. So I don't think he's going to be stopping here at Roy or getting too intimidated by Cola whatsoever. That said, maybe he should be because he's trailing by about 60%. Uh, good sneeze at close range from Roy away from dying. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the close range because, you know, with Roy, you got to be close to him to get that sweet spot of the sword, the complete opposite of Marth. But uh, with this character as well, uh, he's got a great ledge trapping ability against Ike. If he manages to uh, put that Aether in the wrong spot, Cola can get an easy counter against him and just toss him off stage. Yes, playing around at the ledge. Just re-grabbing a couple times, making it tricky for Cola to follow where he's going to go. Sure, you're not invincible when you re-grab, but your opponent might not be ready for it. And right now, Yez is using that to his advantage. He's got a pretty big opening off that situation. Quick draw right to the ledge. Yeah, not going to go high. Kind of a tricky mix-up for Ike, whose recovery isn't great. It is a little bit hard to edge guard, especially if he's high enough to go for quick draw. Not used to seeing someone live against Roy to 160%, but here we are. We're seeing it happen today. Get him with the blazer? Trying to recover? Mm. Kills him? Yep, that last hit just poking him into the ledge right there. And Yez not ready for the tech. So we're going to see uh, not an early stock loss, but a very strange looking one. Uh, Roy's still certainly well within kill percent for Ike. Is Yez going to be able to land that key hit though? Or is Cola just going to get a ton of momentum going and a ton of extra credit to follow? Getting over that strong dash attack. Still good DI coming out from Cola to be able to survive. 131% jumps off. That's the second time he's gone for that. You know, just drop off the ledge into a side B rush. But now, up tilt. Going to call out that stock from Cola. He has evening up the stocks, but a, a little bleeding just a little bit. Yep, I can tack on 60 in the blink of an eye, though. We'll see if he's able to pull that off. Yeah, up B out of shield. Okay, snagging Roy. Tacks on a quick 20 with that. Two dash attacks in a dash. row. Okay. Can I get three? Wait, forward tilt pushes him back off stage. He thought he was going to go for the early recovery. That would have been the death, but now he puts himself in a bad situation to die because he bet it all with that really early counter. He ended up throwing away his stock because when he was trying to get back onto the stage, that's that counter I was talking about from Roy against Ike. He tried to recover with Aether. You're going to get knocked off. Yeah, both of these characters can do awful things to each other's recoveries, but yes, just a little hasty in his approach for it. Okay, there we go. Up air, and we're back to basically dead even. Yes, not letting the momentum slip out of his hands by any means in the set, or at least in this first game. And, we, and honestly, a lot of people like to think of Ike as like the, the Nair character, right? Like especially in the beginning of Ultimate. Oh no, he's off stage. But he hasn't been really using Nair that often in this match. It seems to be up air as his aerial of choice because he wants to keep him airborne. And that's going to be the one that puts him above him. I feel like. Even though Roy is a fast faller, Yez is not letting him jump down, fall down on the ground once he's got him comboed in the air. Oh, neutral get up Ooh. right into the jab. Almost a forward smash afterward. But Yez staying alive here. Actually, staying in the lead. Nair up air. Cola burns the double jump on the way down. Okay. Gonna manage to touch ground. But for how much longer? There's a smart double jump. But now he's coming back on, gets back on the ledge. Oh, the, er, he held down on the blazer, gets caught by the back here, and that's going to be the game. Yes, in a quick fashion, taking that out. You know what, man? He might not have even held down because if Roy's too close to the ledge, his up he won't snap. So kind of a tough break there for Cole. He could have died for that, instead died in the interaction immediately after. But yes, after trailing in the earlier parts of the game, manages to pull that one back, ends up walking away with the first game under his belt. Cola, I mean, he looked great the whole time. I'm not going to lie, but yes. Ike is just one of those characters that hits so hard that if you make a couple mistakes, you're going to be feeling it. It's like, even though, you know, 
Roy's got the speed. He's got the damage. He's got everything. He's he needs to be super close to Ike in order to get that damage going. Whereas Ike wants to keep Roy at arm's length with that giant sword. He wants to make sure he's not getting anywhere near him. So he's going to be kind of like, it, it doesn't look like he's playing defensive, but you guarantee you he is playing a little bit defensive, especially right now. Uh, he wants to just keep Roy at that very large distance while trying to just make sure he can't get in. Yeah, one of the hardest things as a sword character is being outranged by the opponent, right? And now, obviously, Ike is the one with the range advantage, not just in terms of the actual length of the sword, but like you said, how Roy wants to be extremely close to you in order to hit those sweet spots. It does feel kind of tough for Roy. That said, he's got the advantage in other categories like speed, and it's definitely not a bad matchup for Roy by any means. Just a little bit tricky when the stuff that you're normally uh, keeping everybody else at bay with is not all of a sudden just not effective enough against the opponent. All right, good recovery from Cole. He could have easily got caught by that eruption. Very scary situation to find yourself in. Okay, there's the Nair. Going to combo it into the credit card swipe. Take away that first stock. Yes, finding himself in a good position, but Cole can easily just get in there. Get one side B, one jab in the back here. Could potentially call out the stock. Let's see if he can try to get it. There's the setup. No tech. Thought he was going to roll left. If he would have rolled left, that would have been the stock. Yeah, Cola just really hoping Yez was going to be hasty to get back to center stage there. Does not find it. And now we have Yez with a really good opportunity to build some extra credit. Will he be able to do that? I mean, if he lands a neutral air, yes. But if he gets side beat by Roy like that, maybe not. Oh, the high quick draw, though. Uh, Cola not ready for that. Yes has gone to the ledge. I'd say like 90 plus percent of the time with his quick draws. So he's going to be able to get away with a few freebies onto the stage. Not that hey, one. Man. <laughs> yeah, it gets the forward tilt. And we're seeing a little bit of the cons of Roy coming out into play. I don't know how many times we saw something that would have killed with like, say, the likes of Krom, but he ended up getting the sour spot. So I didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, I'm definitely curious as to why Cola doesn't touch Krom at all. I feel like having a character that's so similar but also just a little bit different could help you in some matchups. And interestingly enough, his secondary is Cloud, right? So uh, he's he's confident in the way that Roy does it specifically. Wow, the uh -oh. counters, bro. And that's why you see Yez going for so many air dodges to the ledge, does not want to risk poking himself above with an active hitbox. Roy can, I mean, really any character with a counter can take massive advantage of that against Ike. Uh-oh, almost with some ladder action. Nair to up air, no second up air to follow. But now we've got Cola in real danger of losing his second stock, and he's going to do exactly that right there. Every single time that Yes has been popping Cola up into the air, you'll notice that Cola is burning his double jump as soon as possible because he's trying to avoid another hit, right? Because if the combo is not true, he can get away. However, that puts him in such a disadvantage once he's on the way back down because it's, he has less resources to try to safely land. Speaking of safely land, he's off stage, no jump out of resources. Good spacing from Yez. Managed to outspace the counter from Roy to get back onto the ledge. That's not our send counter. Yep, out of resources and out of range for Roy's uh, counter right there. Of course, that's the disadvantage to having a smaller sword than your opponent. Even silly little interactions like that where it looks like checkmate could still go in your opponent's favor. Oh, no, no, no punish. It looks like that was a, like a flub input. Like he, he called out the quick draw too. He knew he was going to go to the middle stage and then just nothing came out. Oh, shield poking that exposed head right there. And Yez building a bit more momentum here. 57, 65, 82. This character's damage output is ludicrous, bro. And we might be looking at a 2-0 lead for Yez if Cola doesn't come out hot with something right now. Okay, spacing out the shields with the swords. Too high of damage to be able to get that get true combo. You're going to be able to escape. It jumps right into a forward tilt. He's already at high percent on his final stock. Things are looking a little bit bleak here for Cola. And you know he's got to be beating himself up for that, that missed whiff punch on the quick draw. That's, that should have been a stock. Finally ends up closing it out, though. 114. Can he work with this? I mean, Roy's an explosive character. He could easily turn the tides with one setup, but not with that small of a Skittle-sized shield. That forward tilt, not exactly safe from Ike, but it pushes you so far, and it's got so much range that trying to contest it is really difficult even after the fact uh oh cola oh, getting my the god down here this could be a huge moment for him while somehow not finding himself in the way of that up tilt and also yes narrowly avoiding that forward smash that would have been game this is still you, possible for cola if he would have teched in place that would have been the game but cola was relying on the tech oh no i mean we've seen so many of those blazers from reverse out out of shield just miss against as you look at him pose with the ton afterwards he know what he did 
And, you know, in, in another universe, an alternate universe, Cola would have got that punch on the quick draw, and also Cola would have gotten that that uh, the tech read, or didn't go for the tech read, but just immediately went for the F smash to get the kill. But unfortunately, that's not this one. And we got Yez going into a game three situation with a 2 0 lead. This one, I feel like I'm hard pressed to call this an upset, right? Cola, we all know, has a ton of offline results, has been a strong player for a really long time in both Smash 4 when he went by Salt 1 and in Ultimate. Um, but Yez, I think Yez is kind of like one of these X Factor players where everyone's waiting to see how he's going to perform offline. Personally, I think it'll be very well. I think Ike is one of those characters that uh, has kind of left the front of the mind of, of many Smash Ultimate players, right? Ever since Leo stopped using him on the biggest stage as possible. But this character can still do it. And Yez is just extremely talented. So I, I would really like to see him get a chance to prove himself offline. He is one game away from doing that. But Cola, a very scrappy player in his own right. I know I've said that so many times about a lot of these players, but it's definitely true. I mean, he, he just likes to get in there. He's always still in the game. You saw it right there in the, in game two that he almost won it off of one forward smash. Uh, I don't know. Either way, seeing one of these guys not make it to the regional finals would be a heartbreaker. I'm noticing that the every single time that Cola is center stage and Yez is chilling on the edge, he's kind of just like dancing with the shield a little bit, kind of like taunting him, daring him mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. approach him. And look what happens. He, I mean, Cola ends up taking the stock with a pretty hefty lead. Yeah, cannot get too confident, especially against a player like this. I feel like Cola powers up when people start to flex on him a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, dude. Like, he did taunt at the end of that last game. And feeling himself a little bit. Catch. Oh. <laughs> no, that was so ballsy. He should not have cut her that. Both of them, honestly, making some extremely <laughs> bold plays right there. But it's gonna be Yez. Keeping his head on straight, holding that B button just a little bit longer, knowing that Cola might have gone for counter. It's like that sorty oh. intuition. That was a game of chicken right there, if I've ever seen one. And Yez coming out on top of it, but that said, after Cola's respawn, he has still not been hit. Tacking on 80 plus damage unresponded to. Nice winning that shield standoff right there. Okay, but it could be Yez's turn. I like that air dodge read, but nothing off of it. Just the neutral air. Normally we see that open a lot of doors for Ike. Okay, what's the lead trap option? Just goes for the neutral getup. I'm gonna run up there and get a grab. It's fine. Uh, that, interesting that he went for the back throw. Just tossed him to the center stage. Knew he was gonna go for the quick draw, so he managed to go for the uh, the gamble, the aggressive approach off stage. Managed to clutch that with the forward air. If he would have like recovered any other way, Cole could have put himself into a pretty bad position. So good call out from him. Uh oh, the neutral air starting up. There. This is a get four. huge break for Cole. Take it five. Yeah. I think you're getting four games at the very least, Austin. The way that. Cola is playing right now. He is just looking unstoppable. Hold up, though. Let me fix my face. Yes, tacking on some damage here. Okay, not going to finish the stock. I think he kind of needed it right there just to keep himself in the game in terms of, like, the, the feel and the flow of things. But it's still far from over. I like that. Uh, he ended up going for the double-edged dance, the up variant, because he knew that he was airborne. That's the anti-air one. Oh, big punish. Not yeah, that, that was a very... Over. Yeah, like he tried to go for the up B. I get it. If uh, Cola would have jumped up there, he would have called him out and he up some damage. But it was a pretty risky option to go for because if he landed it, he would have got Cola off of him. It wouldn't even been a kill. But because he missed it, he died and lost the game. So uh, Cola just playing it safe there near the end. And like you said, he might have been powered up a little bit from the uh, the the taunts coming out from his opponent. Yeah, I think Cola's the kind of guy who's like, no one's gonna do that to me on stream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially on VG Bootcamp, right? Right, right. Especially at the Smash World Tour where everyone is watching. Of course, even if you're not catching it live, you might be catching the VODs on YouTube. So thank you for watching if you're here or if you're joining us later. But either we way, appreciate you. just honestly, a, a great set unfolding already. I mean, Yez kind of walking away with the first two games very quickly and Cola responding in kind with a dominant game four. We'll see if we're able to go to the distance with this one. If it's going to go to five. My guess is that it will. Just based on how Cole is as a player, I feel like he's very adaptive. He'll be able to figure this one out and at least take another game from Yez. But in terms of who's actually going to win it, I don't think I could tell you that. I can't make that call. I can't reveal the next chapter of the script. 
Literally, if I was a gambling man, I think I would still be afraid to gamble on this. Even though there is a 2-1 lead for Yez, I still don't know who's going to win this. But we're going to go to a small battlefield. First appearance since we've been on the mic. Uh, let's see what's going to happen here on this stage. Immediately going for the grab. I love the stage control that Cole is ex exhibiting here. Managed to go with the super armor right through that tilt and manages to steal. Gets away from the corner and now has stage control. Center stage. Bro, Cola was smothering this man at the ledge for a second. Yes gets back, hits him three, four times, and suddenly it's even. And now it's actually in Yes's favor. Oh, would have been even more so if he had landed the follow-up after that grab goes to the platform. He knows, okay, the reason Yes went for that platform, which is definitely not the optimal play, is because Cola has shown his willingness to run right under the ledge and stick out a counter on that Aether, something that a lot of players just allow Yes to get away with for free. So even though Cola made a great play, uh, and good long-term conditioning there. Still capitalized on on Yez's adjustment. It doesn't matter. Yez is going to be the one walking away with this first stock. Looking to put a cap on the set here. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. A little bit of delay. Hopefully it... Don't uh, kick us out, please. Out. Please yeah. don't kick us out. Nintendo, I am begging. No! <laughs> Damn. Hopefully the player's unaffected by that. Yeah, the players are probably still playing. We'll get word for you guys the second we know. Um, from my understanding, I feel like the spectator got kicked out and they are still playing. So we're not able to, uh, let you guys know who's winning or what's happening within that match, which sucks. Cause I was really invested in that one. Like I'm always a fan of the yeah. fire. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Looks oh, like, Oh no, we lost. Yes. All right. And so Yez this... had the lead too. Yeah. This did happen in wrath versus Pelu Pelu earlier in the day. And I believe they just reset to the proper stocks and percent. Fortunately, you know, this is all recorded, so it wouldn't be too much effort to do that again. Not sure exactly what the official call is going to be. Um, so we'll let you guys know as soon as we know from production, from the TO staff. But it does look like Yez is the one who dropped out of the lobby right there. Um, yeah, very unfortunate. Yeah, uh, like I said, it uh, looks like they gave a point to Cola right down the board. We haven't been told anything, but I noticed that the score went from one to two. I don't know if that is intentional or they're still just because there's, there's no way they made it that fast of a call, right? Because, you know, we have the TOs that are really hard at work trying to figure out what is the verdict and what's happening. Uh, we're going to see momentarily what the if, if they're going to replay the match, if they just give the game to Cola, because I believe previously in a different set, I believe they just tried to like recreate the scenario from the last time it dropped. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean, Yez is the one that disconnected, so I wouldn't be shocked if Yez had to forfeit the game since Cole is the one that stayed in the ring. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I think the ruling is that Cola does pick up the game win. Uh, this this is a mid game disconnect from just one side, so gonna go the way of Cola. Um, Kind of unfortunate. Yes, was up. Oh, never mind. You know what? Oh, Cola, hold on. be in a chat. What a bro, dude. Just going to restart, not take the game. Wants to get it done properly. Yo, on the brink of being sent to loser's bracket. The fact that this man's not just taking that game and running. I got to appreciate that sportsmanship. That's like three gold stars for you, Cola. Already was a big fan. But I mean, moves like that, even if you lose the set, bro, you won the tournament in my eyes. Dude, so like... You cannot fault a player for wanting to enact a tourney rule, right? That Those are the rules within the yep. tournament. That is like how this works. They're, they're there for a reason to, you know, fix situations like this and not try to put the burden on the player because there's a lot on the state. There's a lot on the line here. You get invited to a regional finals. You get to perform there. There's a lot of money on the line. There's so much on, you know, happening. Yet beyond that, Cola decides no. I don't want to win like that. I want to win the way I want to win. So it does help him a little bit because they're restarting the game completely. Riaz did have a lead, but it's it's yeah. already gracious of Cola to just give him the match. And look at that, the, the friendly taunts at the beginning. Let's get, jump right back into it. I'm sure Yez is very appreciative of the sportsmanship from Cola. Yeah, I was at like 100 something, right? So it's not the, the biggest uh, freaking stock, stock there, but yeah, it's still a lead is a lead. I got to give Cola mega props for that, man. What a bro. All right, either way, looks like he's off to a pretty hot start. Big down air into back air punish right there. And the counter, okay, he is a breath away from oh. taking the stock. Has to land one more counter, but he's not. Oh, never mind, okay. Yes, is actually just too far from the ledge to make it back there. I think he pulled back on his drift a little bit just to stay ambiguous, and it ended up getting him killed anyway. Might have been checkmate either way. Not sure. 
the well, and it also air dodged upwards a bit. And when you when you air dodge up, like you yeah. still have to wait till you go far below enough to be able to do an action afterwards. So it makes you stall even longer without being able to like up B. So that also probably helped seal his fate. But here we go, stock number two. Cola pretty playing pretty dominant. He was off stage for a bit. It was kind of a scary situation, but now he's turned the tides, has him off 82%. Good air dodge from you guys gonna be able to avoid that back air. And there into up air. Good stuff. Not enough to take the stock though. And now, oh, what? Quick oh, draw the no. wrong way. Maybe, I mean, it wouldn't have served him any better to have gone forward. So <laughs> I think maybe he wanted to just create a little bit more space. Maybe skill check Cola real quick. Be like, hey, are you ready for this? Oh, the, ooh, the air dodge out. Yeah, that reverse clank was super goofy. And so was that killing off the top. Roy's dash attack, I certainly would have expected to be a horizontal knockout right there, but it does not matter. It looks like Cola is going to be taking this one to five games. Oh, yes, looking for the pillars. Only gets one. Not enough to reach Cola, but the forward air enough to take his stock away. Classic down tilt. I mean, I feel like it, to be a good character in this game, you got to have a down tilt confirmed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to have some safe grounded button into aerial that kills. Okay, here we go. Takes the trade. A lot big damage coming off of this. Off of this small battlefield platform. Not oh lenting up. 68%? And the counter, too. Just saying, I know you're going to press a button on the way down. Yes, <laughs> kind of pressing a button. I mean, he, he side beat to safety, so he got away with it. But all right, here we go. Big chunk from Aether. Looking for the edge guard. Oh, and not snapping the ledge. That could have been Yez's moment to take it. Even the stock's up. Either way, it's going to be Cola. One good tilt away. Uh, I thought we were going to see forward tilt take the kill right there and bring this to a game five. But I, I think one way or another, we're getting there. Okay, you got that 129%. Land down with the Nair into the up air. 94%, not letting him touch the ground yet, just yet. Gets back on stage, jumps off the ledge, gets the double edge dance. And we're still alive. Oh, looks for the roll in, throwing out he up tilt. It so bad. Yeah. I don't think forward tilt would have even connected right there the way he timed and spaced it. So good on Yez to try to cover that. Good call, looking for the answer. Spamming there. Hope if you're just going to chill there, I'm going to down tilt you. Tries to go off there. I, the down tilt put him in such a weird position that he wasn't able to recover with that early aether. And that's going to be game four going to Cola in proper fashion. Yeah, Cola taking Yez's jump with that last down tilt right there. He was looking for probably drop off double jump fair onto the stage. A classic way to get back on for a lot of characters, but especially those with swords. Either way, it is the fifth and final game between these two titans of the online era. Cola taking a little bit of a break in between, but he started dominant and it's looking like he's going to finish dominant. And Yez, I mean, this guy has just been steamrolling people for the better part of uh, almost almost a year and a half, a year and two months officially. Yeah, he's got a lot of. He's been, he's been Wi Fi grind for a pretty long time. He's made some appearances in the recap, making a lot of tournament wins. And now we're going to see if he can try to get one more win against Cola. Again, he lost game four. He did disconnect earlier. He had a slight lead, but you know that that is on him for disconnecting. But we're going to jump into game five, going straight back to small battlefield. Let's see if this is going to be the answer. Do you think he likes this stage because of the platform placements? Like he can. Like, I feel like I can up B at the edge of the stage and then he can make the opponent guess where he's going to land, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, Yez clearly comfortable here. If he's betting his winner's bracket life on it, wow. Forward tilt instead of forward smash probably would have sealed the deal on that first stock. That said, Cola's still hanging on here. Not going to run into that up smash, but wow, almost not punishing it either. Barely enough time to stick a down tilt in there. And yeah, with uh, such a healthy Yez on the screen, it's not going to result in a kill or anywhere close to it. Okay, forward tilt. Oh, Scared no. him. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's checkmate at that point, right? Because if you, if you go up a little bit higher, you're going to get caught by it. Oh, my God. And oh, he, was he went to the right? And he's dead. <laughs> Yo, yes. Yanking did, did the stock with... Huh? Max, the original Aether, did he do that on purpose? Dude, Swing I to the right did. to avoid the counter? I think he did, and all Cola had to do was not throw the counter out, and that was a free forward smash. We could have been looking at an even game instead. It's Cola trailing by a stock, and then some. Yes, looking to put a cap on it right now. Okay, not quite. But Cola not finding anything after that neutral air. This is getting out of hand quickly. Catches the jump. 
did he eat the double? No, he didn't. He still has the double jump. Gonna go for the air dodge so he doesn't have to risk the counter. You know, just go on to the ledge. Gets back to center stage scot free, but Cole has a little bit of advantage here. I mean, they're definitely just baiting each other to jump. Like, they're just swinging above their shields. Oh, man. Those first two stocks were so tragic for Cola, too. Yeah. I mean, oh, what a start for you guys. That was scary. He could have died immediately right there. That could have been that could have been the set. Bro, I I first tuned into the stream for Cola versus Kirby Kid earlier today, where Cola in game five lost his first stock in the blink of an eye. Oh, but he pulled it back just as quickly. Not going to have the same fortune against Yez. Drops it in the game five after, honestly, some extremely high IQ plays from Yez. Turning the up B around to avoid counter. The foresight, bro. This man should I make Mithra. I, <laughs> right? I never would have thought to do something like that to avoid a counter. That is such a smart situation. Good lord. And a risky play as well, because if Cola didn't throw counter out preemptively, he would have been he eating did. a forward smash and dying. Yeah. And then to have the presence.